Hello, welcome to Michelle Sews Again. I'm Michelle. It is Sunday, so it's my edition of Hashtag Friday Sews. If you want to hear what I've been making, what I have planned, and a little bit about life, then please stay tuned. Okay, so I'm just going to jump into it. Um, okay, so I'm just going to jump into it. Hercules. Hercules is having a little fun in the background, so I'm sure he'll steal the show like he always does. Um, but I have only made one thing in the past several weeks. In fact, I only made one garment in all of the month of February. And it is my Fiber Mood Norma. Um, it is make number five from my make nine list. And um, I will do a full review on this, but spoiler alert, I don't love it. It's not because of the pattern, it's because of the fabric that I used. This is dirty. <laughs> I already spilled something on it. Um, but I used this double gauze from Joanne and I bought two different colors when I bought it. The other color is holding up great. There's, It's not stretching out. I love the top. It's a, I made a sleepwear top and I love it. Um, using it for this, it did not quite work out. So um, this gauze is from Joanne. This one that I used for the sleeve is from Zinc's Fabric Outlet in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, and yeah, I actually like the pattern. So I will consider this a muslin. I'm not even gonna say it's a wearable muslin because it's unlikely that I will wear this. Um, but yeah, I do like the pattern. Um, this size did fit me. I'll pop in a little photo here so you can see. And that's pretty much all I've made in many weeks. Um, <clears throat> what's next? Um, I need to make a change to my Color Me Cafe challenge plans. So I had mentioned in a previous video that I was gonna use, I'm still using the same fabrics. So I'm using this fabric, I'm using this, uh, one of these two for like the collar and the placket, and then I'm gonna use the jelly roll for um, some inset stuff, but I can't use the Style Arc Martha Overshirt because there are some Style Arc patterns that are not available in multi-size PDFs or multi-size prints, uh, printed versions. And I usually stay away from those, but apparently I really liked the Martha Overshirt and I bought it in a single size. Now, when you buy a single size from Style Arc, they do give you one size down and one size up. So technically it's not a single size. However, the size I bought is a 24. Um, when I, and as we know from the recent uh, Betty Woven Tunic, I made the size 18 in that and really needed to go down to a 16 when you looked at the finished measurements. When I looked at the finished measurements of the Martha Overshirt, I probably need to make a 16 as well. So there's way too big of a gap between the smallest size that I bought, which is a 22, and the 16. So I'm not going to make that for my Color Me Cafe challenge. I am switching to the Style Arc Blair. I'll pop a picture of the line drawings here. Um, I have made that shirt twice before. Once was when I first started sewing again. Um, the size that I made was way too small because I didn't know about the difference between ready to wear sizing and sewing sizing. So I had bought the pattern that matched my ready to wear size, which was way too small. The second time that I made it, it fit great, I made the right size, but as you might remember, I had made it in a couple of different black and white cotton prints that I wanted to um, dye over so that the white wasn't white and there was kind of like fun, funky dye in between the black and that didn't really work out, so I ditched that. But I did like the pattern and I did like the size. So I do wanna make that one again, and I think that would be the perfect vehicle to do this uh, mixed print um, design. So I'm gonna use the yellow on the top, and then I'm gonna do the piecing for the bottom panel, and then I'm still gonna use those other two prints, one of them, not both, for the collar and the placket. And I think that'll come out great. I think that'll come out great, and I'm excited about that. Um, a little bummed about the Martha Overshirt. 
And honestly, I need to rethink. I looked in my pattern stash and I have 43 style arc patterns. They're all in the 18 to 30 size range. So if I need the 16 for, for many of them, I am going to have to figure out how to just, I mean, it shouldn't from an 18 to a 16 shouldn't be that difficult of an adjustment. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have to keep that in mind now that I am lo I'm losing weight again. I've started back on the downward track and um, most of the finished measurements that I've read recently would put me in the 16. So I'm going to have to be more careful of that when I buy any new patterns from them. So that's that. Um, next, so that is one of my near future, uh, but it's probably not my next because that I have until the middle of June to finish to enter the challenge. Um, the sewing expo is coming up and I'll talk about that in a minute, but as a group, we have decided that we're going to wear green for Friday, the 317 um, Friday Sews Meetup, where vloggers and viewers that like to follow Friday Sews are going to do a meetup in kind of the lobby-ish area at the Sewing Expo. And so we all want to wear green because it's St. Patty's Day. So I want to make something green. So I have the Paper, block, paper Theory Block T. I think that's what it's called. And I have these two rayon chalet fabrics that I had bought on eBay a couple of years ago. Um, honestly, they don't feel like they're the best quality, but I need to use them. I love the colors and I think that these two would look really great together. So I'm going to use this for the bodice and I'm going to use this for that block inset. And I think that's a great color combo and it's a lightweight fabric. Um, I think you know, it'll be easy to sew. I just don't know if it's going to hold its shape. So we'll see. I don't often make wearable muslins because it's just, I try not to buy fabric that I don't absolutely love anymore. I kind of only make wearable muslins and actually I, I don't even usually make wearable muslins. If I feel that I need to make a muslin to make sure that the fit is right before I dig into one of my great fabrics, I'm usually going to make a fit muslin that's just enough to make sure it fits and I won't do the whole thing. So for those, I've been using thrifted sheets and duvets and things like that um, and not fabric that I've bought straight up. So um, this, if this works, if this um, fabric is a better quality than I think it is, then it'll be a shirt that I will be extremely happy with. So that's that. Um, I have not made any more progress on my quilt, so I've mentioned it before. Um, Trish from Pinky's Farm and I are collab collaborating on a quilt. Um, our quilts don't look anything alike, um, but I wanted to venture into making a quilt, and she had some quilt blocks that she wanted to put together, and we're both kind of taking it slow. That's what we agreed to, um, but she's kind of already got like a stack, man. She's, she's hitting it. Go check out Trisha's channel. I'll link it in the description box below. Um, she talked about her quilt and Friday sews, but these are my blocks. I'm basically just doing stripes that I'm going to mix and match in different directions. And I'm probably going to put strips in between them. Um, and maybe a border. I'm not sure yet. Um, I'll figure all that out as I go, but I'm using, um, some of my scraps from all of my ice dyes. So I'm excited about that. I think it's going to look super cool, um, but I haven't made any progress on it. I did receive some of the patterns that I talked about in my pattern haul video recently. I will link that up here. If you're interested, I bought 18 patterns since the beginning of the year at different times, but I kind of talked about all of them in the same video. Two of them are big four patterns. Surprise, surprise. Um, this one is one that all of my sew sisters have made and it is McCall's 8241. And yes, I live in Florida. I don't really need ponchos, but I travel to Ohio a lot and it does get cold here from time to time. Plus I leave my AC on and it's 
gets really cold here while I'm working. So this would be a great one to just throw over whatever I'm wearing for the day. Um, I probably won't make the one with the fringe. Um, I'm not really interested in that. Um, so I will make, I think I'm gonna make B because I kind of want that turtleneck. I think that'll be cool. So that came in the mail. And then also I got this McCall's 8358. And this is a Laura Ashley vintage 70s inspired pattern. And just trying to step outside of my comfort zone. This one is fitted more around the waist, which I tend to avoid. But after making the True Bias Shelby and seeing how that like fitted shape was more flattering on me, I decided to give this one a try and I thought the dress looked sweet. So um, I'm gonna be making that at some point in the future and that one will likely be a collab with somebody who you might know that loves Laura Ashley. <laughs> um, okay, <clears throat> I also got many of my patterns, um, my PDF patterns I sent off to PDF Plotting and I got the big square box with all of those in it. I haven't opened it yet and started um, cutting them out. Usually what I do is um, I take them out. Any that I'm gonna make in the near future, I do a rough cut. I don't worry about the sizing yet. I rough cut all the pieces. I put them in one of my manila envelopes and label it and then file it in these boxes back here. If it's not one that I intend to make in the near future, then I roll it up and I have some baskets where all of my um, PDF printed patterns live. So um, got those. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the Sewing Expo is coming up. In fact, it is the week after this week, and I'm really excited about that. I am leaving my house Tuesday and driving up Tuesday night because I have an all day class Wednesday that starts at like nine and um, Lakeland, which is outside of Orlando is I think three hours from me in that neighborhood. Um, so I didn't wanna drive up Wednesday morning and be tired for the start of the class. So I'm driving up Tuesday night and I am taking classes every day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And um, I am really excited. So I've already shared all the classes that I'm taking. If you're interested to hear what I'm taking, I'll link that video up here. And if you're taking any of those classes, let me know in the comments. I would love to meet you. Um, <coughs> but as I mentioned, while we're there, we're doing kind of like a Friday Sews meetup for everybody that um, participates in Friday Sews, whether you're a vlogger or a viewer. And um, we're gonna do that Friday the 17th at noon in the lobby-ish area. So when you go in, I think, um, entrance number two and take a right past the registration desk, there's an area there where um, there's room for people to meet up. So we're gonna be there and um, we're all gonna be wearing green. So if you wanna wear green because it's, because it's St. Patrick's Day, then join us. Um, all right, I am, so I'll do a March challenge video coming up soon, um, but in the short term, I wanted to make sure you probably already know about um, the So Frugal Challenge is back for its third year. And so this year, use the hashtag So Frugal 23. This is a challenge that's hosted by Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl and Sam from Frugalissima. And the idea behind it is you use a free pattern that is available to anybody. So um, don't use a free pattern that came in a magazine. Technically, it's not really free because you paid for the magazine. Don't use a pattern that you got from free from a friend. It needs to be something that's available to anybody if they decide that they wanted to make it. And you also should be using fabric from your stash and not buying anything new. You will post your make on March 31st and be entered to win a boatload of prizes. So it's a really great way to use up your stash. It's a great way to, um, you know, if you are on a budget, it's a great way to be introduced some, to some really fabulous um, free patterns. And my video, I will be um, supporting the challenge with a video. My video is on the 19th, yeah, 319. And there are, I think, two vloggers every day for the whole month that are sharing their ideas on free patterns that you could use um, to make something. 
and some of them are sharing fabric options um some of them are doing it you know everybody's doing some kind of a theme whether it's children's patterns or plus size patterns or it's free t-shirts or a capsule a small capsule wardrobe whatever um there are a lot of different ideas out there so follow the hashtag so frugal 23 or just so frugal in the youtube search bar and you will get the list of all the vloggers that are participating i am going to be sharing um, only one pattern, but I'm going to give you some different hack ideas for that one pattern. So if you didn't want to print out like a ton of different free patterns, you could print out this one and then make, you know, I, I don't know how many I'm going to go with, maybe five hacks um, for the free pattern. So if that sounds interesting to you, then maybe subscribe if you're not already so that you can be alerted when that video comes out. Um, all right. And the last thing for Friday Sews that we usually share is a little bit about life. And I don't, <laughs> I haven't been here in a while because uh, life has been busy, but not interesting. So um, I was in Ohio all last week for work and we had this really amazing um, strategy summit that I was lucky to be a part of. And it was just, it was such an inspiring um, time. It was facilitated by a professional meeting facilitator, which really kind of takes the pressure off the participants to have to keep things going. And it was really, um, I don't know how else to say it other than it was really inspiring. It really got everybody's creative juices flowing. And we actually left the summit with what our big rocks are that we want to achieve this year and action steps on how to achieve them. And um, everybody ended up being part of one of the task force uh, groups that was created based on the big rocks that we want to achieve as a company this year, which it, it was just amazing. It was very awesome. So we, I did that all week. And then I've also been sick for the last two weeks. I got this, <clears throat> I developed this cough two weeks ago. I haven't really had other symptoms until the last couple of days, but I've had this really like nasty cough for the last two weeks. I haven't had head congestion. I haven't had a fever. I did check to make sure I didn't have COVID before I got on the plane. Um, and I don't, I didn't think I did, but I definitely don't. Um, and then when I got home on Friday, I just started feeling even worse. And I started getting the head congestion um, and just, I've been really lethargic all weekend. So hopefully that's gonna start moving its way out soon, but yeah, that's another reason why I haven't really been sewing a whole lot. Um, but that's really all I got this week, you guys. I hope everybody is doing great. Wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.